Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the bond length of a molecule from its rotational constant. And this is using microwave spectroscopy. So if you're not familiar with microwave spectroscopy, check out the video that I'll link to below called Introduction to Microwave Spectroscopy, and that'll help give you an understanding of where it is that we're starting from. So the idea here is you've gone into the lab and you've collected a microwave spectra. And when you did that, you'll get this gap between all of your different absorption peaks. And that gap tells you about the rotational constant. And if we know the rotational constant, we can calculate bond length. Here's the equation that allows us to do that. It tells us that our rotational constant is equal to Planck's constant divided by 8 pi squared times the speed of light. And then this mu and r are the things that we want to focus on for now. Mu is the reduced mass. And we'll look, take a look at how to calculate that in just a second. But it's just a math trick to take our two masses and treat them just as one. And this r is what we're really going to try to get out. It's the bond length. So our whole goal is going to be to start with our rotational constant and calculate r. Let's take a look at a specific example problem. So this problem tells us that the rotational constant for HI is 6.51 wave numbers, and it wants to know what is the bond length. Well, we can calculate this in a few steps, and I've broken them down down here. So first of all, step one is calculate the reduced mass, and we want that particularly in kilograms. Now, how do we calculate reduced mass? Well. Reduced mass, which is symbolized with mu, is equal to mass 1 that we're dealing with times mass 2 divided by mass 1 plus mass 2. And that's going to give us our reduced mass. Again, this is just a trick to uh, treat our two separate masses as 1. So let's plug in mass 1 times mass 2 divided by mass 1 plus mass 2. Remember, what we're dealing with here is hydrogen and iodine. And it tells us what specific isotopes we have. And I've written down the masses down here. And they're in terms of AMU. So first we're going to calculate the reduced mass in AMU, and then we're going to convert that to kilograms. So that's going to give me 1.0078 times 128.904 divided by 1.0078 plus 128.904. And this actually will give us almost exactly one. And it's not uncommon to get pretty close to one. This is even closer to one than normal. It's one way out to three decimal places. All right. And now if we want to use this in our problem, because the rest of our problem has things like the speed of light in it and Planck's constant, that means we need to use kilograms. And so we're going to convert our 1.00 AMU to kilograms. And we're going to do that using this equality down here. 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So we get 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 up top, and that's kilograms, divided by 1 AMU. And not shockingly, when we multiply those together, we just get out 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, so that's step one. That's how we calculate a reduced mass. Step two says convert our rotational constant, B, into per meters. So right now, notice that it's per centimeters. So 6.51, 1 over centimeters. And this tricks a lot of people up because you're so used to doing conversions between centimeters and meters that you just say, hey, all I need to do is divide by 100. But because it's per centimeters, that means that I need to write 100 centimeters up top and 1 meter on the bottom. That's going to make my centimeters cancel out. But notice now I'm multiplying by 100 instead of dividing by 100 because it's per centimeters, not centimeters. Those are different units. And when I do that, I get 651 per meters, 1 over meters, or another way to write it, 651 meters to the minus 1. All right, last step. Let's calculate our bond length. And we're going to do that with this equation that relates our rotational constant to our bond length. So that's going to take a little algebra. We start out with B equals H all divided by 8 pi squared C mu R squared. And we need to get R by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by R squared. And we're going to divide both sides by B to get B over on the other side. And that's going to cancel out our B over here and cancel out our R squared over there. And that means what we're going to get out is r squared equals h over 8 pi squared c mu b. 
And then we need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. Rewrite our R. Okay, so that's it. And now all we gotta do is plug in our constants, all of the values we've calculated. So up top, we just have Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And then we have eight pi squared times the speed of light, which is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, times our reduced mass, which we calculated up here. So that's 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. More space needed. Last thing we need to plug in, our rotational constant, 651 per meters. All right, so when we calculate that out, what we'll actually get is 1.61 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Is that a reasonable value? Remember, when you get to the end of a problem like this or any other problem, you wanna ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Well, to think about it, let's put that into angstroms, which just means we multiply by 10 to the 10th. That would be 1.61 angstroms. A bond length is usually around an angstrom, so that makes sense. Uh, what you should expect to get here is something around an angstrom for most of your bond lengths. It's also common to put that into picometers, which would just be multiplying our top answer by 10 to the 12th, which would mean this was 161 picometers. And this is about the size you should expect for a bond length for a diatomic molecule. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry, where we've taken a look at calculating a bond length from a rotational constant. If you have any questions, please ask those below. Also, you can subscribe by clicking the link right there. Thanks for watching.